Are you feeling frustrated in dealing with someone who is controlling and rigid or someone who is sloppy and unreliable? Tune into today's episode to understand these opposite sides in terms of their conscientiousness level. You will also learn how to optimize these type of personal as well as professional relationships. For our spiritual section, we will be discussing the one action that can really prevent us from succeeding even if the effect manifests themselves after some time. Even if the action was actively done by others, our complacency can get us into trouble. This is our 11th episode. To recap, what we have started with was to help you define where you are in life and which areas you would like to grow in, what kind of identity you want to carry and adopt. This may be a good time to review those plans and see the progress. We would also encourage you to take a look at what needs to be adjusted, tweaked, added or removed. Going back to the first few episodes and doing the suggested exercises would be a great idea at this time. What we have been doing is sharing ideas, thoughts and experiences to improve various relationships in your life. We have also been sharing ideas around improving the relationship with the creator and to use it to excel your progress towards your goals. Last week, we started talking about personality types to help you better understand various people you interact with in personal and professional setting, how to understand your own as well as their preferences and how to optimize the interactions. We talked about the trait of openness last time and this week we'll discuss the trait of conscientiousness. This describes how organized detailed, well-planned one is as opposed to being easygoing and more about the big ideas. This is a trait that describes your approach to getting things done. It measures your self-discipline, organization and reliability. Someone who is at a higher level or higher, higher side of this trait would be Someone who loves to have to-do lists, organization, schedule, enjoys digging into the details and making things perfect. Somebody on the low side of this trait would typically prefer big ideas and strategy and might find list and scheduling boring and overwhelming. This involves the way you love to get things done. Notice that this can be different in different settings, different relationships and different projects. To check out your or someone else's preference for a specific project or a specific relationship, consider the following questions. These have been taken from the book Captivate. If you are high in consciousness, you are typically very organized and detail-oriented. You love to-do lists, plan and schedules. You are a perfectionist. You can be seen as controlling and rigid. So take a look at this and observe and be aware that Sometime, because of this trait, you may appear to be controlling and rigid. We'll talk about how to deal and prevent this sort of impression from happening. Now, on the other hand, if you're low on this trait, you would typically love broad ideas and you typically don't want to get bogged down in details. You're very flexible, you hate being boxed with a plan or a schedule, and you can be seen as sloppy and unreliable. So I hope now you're able to relate the title of the podcast with what we are discussing here. Now, once you've realized this, you know your own preferences and you know the preference of the person you're dealing with, you can actually take advantage by this understanding. If you're dealing with someone who is about big ideas, right? And now it depends on what kind of relationship you have with that person. If you are in a, a managerial relationship, or in a leadership relationships, you may not want to bog down that person with detailed plans, but rather focus on the big idea and discuss the next immediate step or the next three immediate steps without going into a lot of details. On the other hand, if you're pitching the idea to someone who is very detailed oriented, you should be ready to answer many questions. You should be able to demonstrate that you have really thought this well and you have a detailed plan. Right? So once you understand who you are pitching the idea to, who you are managing or who you are reporting to and what is their preference, you can adjust your output to meet their needs. 
Okay, so as you think about presenting or reporting or managing someone and they have a different preference or a different level on this trait of consciousness, you have to consider adjusting and going beyond your comfort level, beyond your comfort zone to be able to take that task and to be able to develop and optimize that relationship. On the other hand, when you are high or low on consciousness, remember that on one extreme, you can actually be seen as controlling or rigid, right? And on the other extreme, you can also be seen as sloppy and unreliable. So make sure that you address these concerns during your communication and get feedback about how people are feeling. This applies to professional as well as personal relationships. So as a leader who is high on organization and details, you shall consider resetting your approach, right? So that you're not viewed by your staff and your team as somebody who is too rigid. Also, as a leader, if you get too much detailed, then what can happen is that you may end up spending your time planning and detailing the job of someone else. And that would limit your capacity to be able to be a leader for a greater team and to focus on things that you need to focus on. So consider that, that your scope as a leader has changed and perhaps the amount of details that you have to get into is to assign tasks, assign ownership, set metrics, set expectations, and to let people run the show, right? And then you check in with them at regular intervals and then advise and coach them accordingly instead of giving them a full detailed plan. Doing this will help them feel the ownership of the task and will give you more flexibility and more time to focus on other issues. On the other hand, if you're low on this scale, if you're low on your organization and details and you tend towards big ideas, then some of the challenges could be actually getting the things done. So this would mean that you need to have some sort of an operator and implementer that would implement your ideas at specific and accepted intervals and accepted timelines. Or if you don't have that sort of flexibility, you don't have those resources, then you would have to roll up your sleeves and get down and get the work done, which would require planning and scheduling and management. Now, when we come to personal relationships, this becomes really, really important as well, because we've seen a lot of cases in which you have couples coming in and they are at totally opposite levels of this trait. So this comes down to like, you know, keeping your clothes organized, keeping your socks organized, you know, planning your weekend trips, planning your weekend activities, you know, sending kids to school, picking them up, all sorts of different things, right? Different things comes in, like people want, your spouse may want you to be reliable, may want you to be predictable, and at the same time, may want you to be unpredictable. So having that sort of all these balances is very, very important. And communications and regular check-ins come in very handy. So if you're aware of these traits and you know which, which side of the skill your spouse's preference is, then you can actually adjust yourself or help your spouse also understand your preference. So in some scenario, you would have to step up, you would have to tap, tap into your side, a passionate lover or a giver, a nourisher, and you have to go outside of your comfort zone and meet the need of your spouse by either being more detailed oriented, you know, setting commitments, setting goals, setting deadlines, having a list and being more organized. Or on the other hand, letting your spouse be, you know, about higher level things and you taking care of the detailed side of things. In an ideal scenario, both spouses, both parties would actually come closer on the scale and would compromise their comfort level and come to a point where they can each accommodate each other and be optimized in their relationship. Sometimes it can also be taken care of by having separate spaces, right? Such as, you know, having a separate drawer for each. So your drawer can be messy and your spouse's drawer can be more organized and vice versa, right? So in some spaces, on some projects, in some areas, you can, you can do things in your own way and the spouse can let the other party do the things in a way that they are comfortable with. Now, let's move on the path where we focus on the strengthening of a relationship with the creator. We discussed last week about how to distinguish between false hopes that deceives one into feeling safe and secure 
and encourages one to be lazy and disobedient to the Creator. And the true and the sincere hope in which one does his best and expects the best. We also shared about how to know which kind of hope one is having. In today's episode, we'll talk about realizing that sins and disobedience to the Creator harm the heart like the poison harms the body. This is mostly taken from the corresponding chapter in the book, The Disease and the Cure by Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah. So consider this, all sins have evil consequences. If you take a look at what happened to our father, Adam, peace be upon him, and his wife, they were expelled from paradise because of a sin, because of an act of disobedience. Absolutely, they were forgiven, but the sin had a consequence. Likewise, if you think about what happened at the Battle of Uhud, right, the companions of the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, how their disobedience led to turning a victory in some sort of a defeat. Obviously, on the greater scale of things, there was a wisdom behind it, there was a lesson behind it, and things turned out well for them, but that disobedience resulted into into facing a short-term loss. It has been reported by the Prophet of Allah وسلم, that a man is deprived of a blessing because of a sin he commits. Uh, let me take this opportunity to also describe our approach to narrating or to quoting the reports from the Prophet of Allah وسلم, Usually if we are following text from the book, such as a book by Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, we may narrate it as is without going into the details of the hadith classification because that is outside the scope of this podcast. If we bring in such hadith, we would always bring in something that is the meaning of the hadith is supported by various other narrations without going into the details of actual chain of narration. Likewise, it is also reported on the authority of Yahya bin Abi Kathir from Abu Salama from Abu Hurairah who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if a sin is discreetly committed it only harms the doer but when it is committed publicly and it is not reprimanded it would harm everyone. So this is something to be of quite concerning to us as well. So you may have people around you who are committing sins and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Right? And we know from the famous hadith that if we have the ability to stop it, to advise against it, we should do that. But at the very least, we should have a distinction between what is a sin and what is not a sin. So if you see a sin being committed and nothing happens to you, you're not disturbed, you don't care about it, this may be a warning sign. Right? What effects do you feel in your heart when you see a disobedience being committed? Now, it's a very interesting narration and uh, it also explains that, okay, if a sin is committed, then what, right? So this narration is reported by Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when a believer sins, there is a black spot placed on his heart. If he repents and asks forgiveness, asks pardons, then his heart is polished. But if he does more of that sin, it increases till it gains completeness over his heart. That is the rust, right? So the Prophet of Allah وسلم, is pointing that this is the rust, the rusting of the heart, the covering of the heart that is mentioned in the kitab, in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he says, Nay, but on their heart is a run. This is the covering, this is the rusting that is coming from the sins and the evil deeds because of what they have earned. So, if we fall into it, we have to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to realize that this was an act of disobedience that we should not have committed. And to plan for it and to regret it and to move forward having a plan in place not to do it. Now, there's another very important point here that people continue to underestimate because when somebody commits a sin, they do not see any consequences right away in general. And they may not regard it as a big deal. But what can happen and does happen is sometimes and many times the effects of the sins are delayed. So it's not that you will see something happening right away. 
right? As if you lose something or you see an effect. Sometimes the effects are delayed, and that can be very uh, misleading if you do not have the right understanding of the sins. It's a very interesting narration from Imam Ahmad that he said on the authority of Abu Darda radiallahu an, who said, Worship Allah as if you could see Him, and know that a little wealth which make you rich is better than which destroys you. You should know that piety never decays and that sins are never forgotten. So they may act like a slow poison as well, that you may not see the effects, but over time you see the effects. So this is something to keep in mind. Let's review the action points and summarize what we've discussed in this episode. Firstly, we recommend you go back to the previous episodes, especially the first two or three episodes and do the exercises so that you can have a snapshot of where, where you are in various stages and various relationships and in various areas of your life and where you want to go and what is the identity that you need to carry to be able to get there. Being aware of various personality types that we deal with, whether in personal or professional relationships, and to optimize those relationships and to understand people's preferences around communications, planning, organization, and details. Is there any relationship that you have where you need to change your approach, where you need to have a discussion so that you can both be operating at a level that is optimized and within your comfort zone? If not, then is there a relationship where you can go outside of your comfort zone and be a giver and be a nourisher in that relationship and provide and meet the needs of other person to meet their specific needs and their specific traits? Are there sins that you have been accustomed to doing and not realizing the greatness of it? As it is said, to do not look at how minor the sins are, but rather look how great is the one you are sinning against how great is the one that you are disobeying has it become the case that sins and disobediences can be happening around you and you do not reject it in your heart you do not find it that it's a disobedience and you have become accustomed to it so these things have consequences so let us fix our own self let us fix our own understanding of the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let us seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our own shortcomings Oh, da 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 da